Today I've got a nice number puzzle from the 2001 Bangladesh Math Olympiad. And I know I've got a bunch of Bangladesh viewers out there, so like I'd like to give them a shout out. Okay, let's look at this problem. We want to define something called the repeat of a natural number to be the number that we obtain by writing the digits of this number two times in a row. So for example, the repeat of 137 would be 137,137. Okay, so let's look at our goal here. Our goal is to find a natural number n such that the repeat of n is a perfect square. So if possible. Okay, let's look at a couple of simple examples first to see if we can get started. Let's maybe first look at the case when n has two digits. You might say, well, what about the case when n has one digit? And I don't think that case is super interesting. So that means we have the case when n is equal to a times b, where a and b come from the set 0, 1, all the way up to 9. Perhaps you want to, might want to say that a is not equal to 0, but I won't like write that in there. Just think that in the back of your mind. Okay, so that means we need something like this. We need a, b, a, b to be a perfect square. So it's m squared. But notice this can factor as a, b times 101 or n times 101. Maybe we should put a bar over this just to show that those are the digits, not a times b. Okay, but then what we can do is easily check that the number 101 is prime, okay? But if the number 101 is prime, then we have 101 dividing into m squared tells us that 101 squared also divides into m squared. But that tells us that 101 divides n, just like maybe clearing 101 out of there. But this is a big contradiction. This is a big contradiction because we've said that n has two digits. But for 101 to divide in, then we would need n to have three digits. Okay, so let's look next at the case when n has three digits and see if anything goes on there before looking at the general case. So here we would have, have n is made up of a, b, c. I'll put a line over it so that's the digits. And then we would need m squared to be equal to a, b, c, a, b, c which is equal to a, b, c times one, zero, zero, one. And now this one, zero, zero, one is no longer prime. You can check pretty easily that this is equal to 73 times 137. So those are the two prime numbers. So let's notice we have 73 divides m squared. That implies that uh, 73 squared divides m squared. And then also 137 divides m squared means that 137 squared also divides m squared. Again, just because those are primes and they're dividing into squares. But these two things together tell us that 1001 must divide into a, b, c, written as digits. In other words, the number n. But again, here we've got a four digit number dividing into a three digit number, which is a clear contradiction. That being said, something that gives us a glimmer of hope here is the fact that 1001 is not a prime. So perhaps if this factors out with a small enough prime, we would be okay. Okay, so now let's look at this more in general. Okay, so working more generally, let's say that n has k digits. Okay, so if n has k digits, that means that the repeat of n is equal to n times 10 to the k plus one. And you can easily see this by the following sketch. This means n is equal to the digits a1 up to ak, but that means that the repeat of n is equal to a1 up to ak, and then another a1 up to ak, which you could separate out into parts. So you could separate this out into a1 up to ak and then a bunch of zeros and then plus a1 up to ak. 
And then clearly this first term is 10 to the k times n and the second term is just n. So you can factor that out kind of as needed. Okay. So if we have the repeat of n as a perfect square, then that means we have m squared is equal to n times 10 to the k plus one. And now from those first examples we just looked at, we noticed that if no square divides this 10 to the k plus one, then 10 to the k plus 1 in fact divides into n, which is a contradiction. So again, that's just doing a little more general of a case of the stuff that we just saw. But that means that if we have this as a perfect square, we must have a perfect square that divides into 10 to the k plus 1. But we might as well take that perfect square to be the square of a prime. So there exists a prime p such that p squared divides into 10 to the k plus 1. So something like that. Now we just have to figure out some good guesses for that prime, as well as what that k might be. And this is a little bit tricky. The first thing that we can see though, is that that prime cannot be equal to 2. That's pretty clear because this is not an even number. Also, this prime cannot be equal to 3. Well, that's because this is not a multiple of three. It's in fact congruent to, let's see, two mod three. And you can see that just by the fact that the digits of this are just one at the beginning, one at the end, and a bunch of zeros together. So the digit sum is the number two. And then uh, furthermore, P cannot be equal to five because that doesn't end in a zero and or, or a five. So that means P could start at seven or it could be 11 or 13 or so on and so forth. And I think it might be likely that any such prime is possible if you pick the k correctly. But that being said, I think it's tricky to pick that k correctly unless you pick your prime well. So let's maybe look at the prime p equals 11. So, and I think this one works out just by the fact that we can use Euler's theorem to get divisibility pretty nicely. Okay, so let's see, can we have um, 11 squared dividing into 10 to the k plus one? Okay, so that's our question. In other words, can we have 121 divide into 10 to the k plus one? And then from here, I just really did a bunch of hand calculation until I got it to work. You might say, well, why did I choose 11 instead of seven? And I chose 11 instead of seven because 11 is so close to 10 that I, think it, that I thought it would have been easier to come up with one of these k values. So really what I'm getting at is I just did a lot of like calculation to get here, but maybe I'll leave it as a question to the audience of, do you think there's a more elegant way of getting at this example? So I found that 10 to the 11 plus one was equal to 11 squared times 23 times 4,093 times 8,779. Okay, great. And so just to reiterate, what we need is we need n times 10 to the 11 plus one to be a perfect square, so m squared. So we've gotta figure out what n is. Well, let's notice that we could just keep all of the factors of 11 outside of n, given that we've got a perfect square in there. So maybe a good first place to look is to look at this leftover bit, and maybe that could play the role of n. But it can't, because if you multiply this out, you'll get something that is 10 digits long. And let's notice that because of our exponent right here is 11, we need this thing to be 11 digits long. So what I did from there is I just multiplied by perfect squares until I got something that was 11 digits long. And all you need to multiply by is four squared, and that's what works. Okay, so just to reiterate, I'll set n equal to four squared times uh, 23 times 4093 times 8779. Great. 
And now in this current setup, what we'll have is n times 10 to the 11 plus one is equal to four squared times 11 squared. So the four squared comes from the n, the 11 squared comes from the 10 to the 11 plus one, and then we've got these other prime factors squared. One of the factors comes from the n and one comes from the 10 to the 11 plus one. So we'll have 4093 squared and 8779 squared. So that's most definitely a perfect square. Okay, so if you've gotten this far and you like what we're doing here, maybe consider subscribing to the channel. And if you're a super fan, you might consider joining the Patreon. So the Patreon does a lot of really interesting stuff. We have a monthly seminar series that's live to patrons. We'll also start posting select videos early on the Patreon with no ads, and also you get some Discord benefits. But in my mind, the biggest reason to join the Patreon is if it reaches the number right now is $1,000 per month, we will turn off the ads on the second channel. So the second channel, Math Major. So this second channel is purely devoted to educational math content for people like who are majoring in math in college right now. So I think removing the ads from that channel would have the effect of creating a better educational resource. And that's a good place to stop. Mm -hmm.